Well, now, the uh, long-term impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the global economy could last for generations, but could it also have a social impact? Well, joining me now from Switzerland is Dr. Frank Jürgen Richter, the former director of the World Economic Forum and chairman of the independent think tank Oasis. Uh, very good to talk to you, Dr. Richter. And first of all, just on the pure economic side, just how cataclysmic is what lies ahead for the world, in your estimation, a global depression? Well, Dermot, we are going to contain the virus sooner or later. It might take 6, 12 or 18 months, leading to a um, great depression, as you mentioned. But the social problems created by the lockdown will last much, much longer. I believe that COVID-19 will change life by accelerating pre-existing trends, both positive and negative, and bringing the social problems of the lower and middle class to the fore. As a matter of fact, the pandemic will speed up social unrest in our societies. Well, a lot to explore there. Let's just talk through the, the uh, trends that you think it will accentuate. Now, over the last uh, 10 years since the financial crash, it seems... Uh, due to quantitative easing and other measures in the developed world, the rich have been getting richer, the very rich. Exactly, Dermot. And, you know, already prior to the COVID crisis, globalization has left a great portion of Western society feeling forgotten and afraid. An uncontrolled form of capitalism favoring the richest few has increasingly diminished the middle class in Western societies. As a consequence, French Yellow West protesters spilled into the streets of Paris, and we have seen similar protests around the globe. Last year's upheaval in Chile, for example, showed that economic growth is not enough. Middle class wants to benefit from economic growth just as the elites do. So, I mean, you mentioned middle class there and social unrest. Do you think the middle classes will, will get involved in demonstrating on the streets? Exactly. It's a very new phenomena, and some people talk about the new... Um, uh, revolution um, coming up, um, the fourth revolution. You know, it started with uh, the French Revolution. We've seen revolution of the Soviet, of the uh, uh, Russian Empire, then the Soviet Empire. Now the fourth revolution, the middle class is uh, marching to the streets. And unemployment, lack of health care, potential threats to social safety nets due to COVID may fuel outrage. And from private testing for the rich to unrest in the suburbs. The coronavirus is highlighting Europe's stark divide. Wow, you mentioned, I mean, you talk about the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, of course, uh, the Chinese Revolution. I mean, do you see political systems being overthrown after this? You know, the coronavirus outbreak is exposing the devastating gaps between the rich and the poor at a moment when Europe and America are primed for class warfare. In America, for example, minorities are dying of COVID at twice the rate of the white years. And yes, uh, it might lead uh, to not only social unrest, but a new revolution. Chilling stuff. And what about uh, within the European Union, these tensions? Again, they've been there for quite a while, particularly between the richer north and centre and, uh, and the south, which have now been bearing the brunt of coronavirus. Yeah, we see the divide in, in Europe, um, the north and the south, but also the west uh, and the east. Uh, Europe is not speaking with uh, one voice, unfortunately. Of course, Britain is a part, you know, you're dealing with um, Brexit at the same time. Uh, but uh, what we need really now is solidarity, that European countries, um, including the UK, collaborate and find a new way of, of dialogue. Um, you know, more than a quarter of European jobs are at risk, and COVID jobless rates will be comparable to the Great Depression of 1929. And the new Great Depression, as I call it, will carry on for a couple of years. And um, continuing with trends, what about population movements? And by that I mean vast population movements, migrations from these, these countries, these areas that are going to be devastated by COVID-19, don't have very well-developed health services, certainly don't have very well-developed economies. We've seen that trend already due to climate change and just a sheer economic necessity particularly when it comes to Europe, of migration from sub-Saharan Africa. Do you think that will accentuate? It will accentuate, definitely. And we talked about um, the crisis of the middle class in Europe and America. But the real crisis uh, might happen in, in Africa because their health care is very poor. Um, we have climate change in sub-Saharan Africa. And now many people, many more people than before, uh, might find their way to Europe. And um, 
it's different from what we've seen three and four years ago when Germany were, was welcoming the migrants. Um, now uh, the attitude is just closing borders, don't let them in. And uh, there might be um, very um, you know, severe clashes happening between uh, those migrants and rich countries of the north. Well, do you see war resulting in this? You're talking about revolution. Uh, it sounds to me as if uh, some of this is a recipe for conflict. Right. We see, um, uh, you know, civil war. Um, it could be class warfare, as mentioned before. It could be real war and skirmishes happening. We see also an imbalance in the world. We have um, America, of course, as a superpower. We have the, the rising power of China. And uh, we have to... We shouldn't forget that uh, we are in a situation of a triple whammy in a way. We have the US-China trade war, we have um, Brexit, now we have COVID. And this is not a very good recipe. Um, I think, you know, especially US and China will have, um, you know, a lot of um, uh, difficulties to deal with each other, each other in, in, in the future. A lot of finger pointing, a bit of this Machiavellian mindset. And um, I just hope, you know, that those superpowers can come together and find a compromise. Uh, and lastly, uh, what about tensions within countries? You talk about the class tensions, but what about the generational tensions? The way that uh, COVID-19 has been, well, not really affecting the young very much indeed, affects the, the more elderly part of the population. Do you think there'll be any resentment resulting from these lockdowns, the economic damage that is doing to so many millions of young people's futures? Right. I think both young people and um, older people are um, impacted by COVID. Uh, COVID is forcing many companies to speed up their digital transformation, pushing um, older workers into lower income occupations. Uh, the promise of further digitalization is fueling middle class frustration, uh, mostly amongst the elderly, but also the millennials. You know, a lot of millennials are coming to the job market uh, now and uh, looking for the job, but I think most companies uh, will uh, freeze any, uh, you know, hiring um, perspectives and, um, you know, what should young people do, what should millennials do? I think um, lifetime employment is that, and even like fixed employment, uh, working for a large company is no longer the norm. Uh, what you will see is that a lot of young people, millennials, will work as freelancers, will be a freelancer economy, and again, resulting in a lot of social unrest. Well, a lot to absorb there, Dr. Richter, and not much of it welcome at all, if any of it. Uh, but very good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed for your analysis. Frank Jürgen Richter. Thanks so much, Trevor.